Hello there. Welcome to this quick guide on, uh, well, car development, early game. It's going to be a pretty shallow guide because, well, we've only had the game for a few days, but I'm going to show you what I believe to be currently the best way to quickly develop your car. Of course, as I find better ways, I will be making more guides, more updated guides, things like that. But as you can see, this is the current car. We're about halfway through season two. And uh, stat wise here, I'd say it's about probably the fourth best car on the grid which has actually given us a uh, chance to fight for podiums and wins with uh, Tsunoda in particular. So I'd say it's, uh, the strategy's worked pretty well, personally. So we're going to talk a little bit about how development works and also how, what you need to take uh, heed of, particularly in terms of the financial sign. Because the the sign and development has had a pretty major rebalance, same with the cost cap. Projects now cost between 700 to 1.6 million. They are all a lot shorter as well, 30 days to 45 days, with, of course, engineers cutting down that time potentially drastically as well. So the projects are shorter and they're more expensive, which, of course, leads to you spending more money. You also do end up getting less money. Cost cap is more of a concern as well because of manufacturing costs. So with that in mind, chassis costing 550000 each and the front wing costing 225000 and everything else is somewhere in between. So with that in mind, we are going to talk about how I would go forth on designing your car for season one and how you can get ready for what in my case was Upper Tower and that was team being a uh, basically the best of the midfield by the end of season one and being able to fight for podiums and wins pretty early on in season two. So let's get into it. Now, as I said, the financial aspect is probably the most important one for this uh, in terms of development. So we want to develop in a manner that is very efficient. And the easiest way to do that is that when you first start your development, you are going to have a few things going for you. So I'm actually just going to jump back onto a first save, uh, a first save with Alphatari, and I'll show you how you'd like to develop. Here we are with the fresh Alphatari car, ninth best on the grid. And we'll go through basically the strategies that I use to get it into a potential race winning car. So, with a huge rebalance for both costs, but also time of the signs there, Intense still just takes 45 days. Same here, just like 30 days. So you can actually design a lot more and you can do it a lot faster because you have four slots. So keep in mind that what we really, really want here is actually an efficient use of money to actually have our upgrades be good. Now, the way that we're going to do that is actually fairly simple. Now, most parts now come with a minimum lifespan. And let's face it, the, manufacturing, the cost for manufacturing parts is larger. So you will definitely be tempted to probably set the lifespan higher. But again, putting the lifespan higher actually has a pretty detrimental effect from stats. So you don't really see it on the suspension. But let's have a look at the underfloor, for example. If we set the minimum lifespan down here, the amount of stats that we gain in particularly cornering here are is pretty massive. It's a huge, it's a huge extra gain. And particularly for also the underfloor, we do want to invest our safety and winter hours. I just maximize underfloor. It's worked pretty well. And this is basically what I want you to do for your underfloor, your chassis, and your side pods. Basically make a balanced setup to start with. You do you do it like this, you keep everything in the middle and you do an intense design for those three parts. The reason for that is very simple. The, those three parts with minimum lifespan and, you know, the boost does give us, just do give some, uh, do give some pretty great boost to virtually every stat. So that is very good. Now, the reason why we want to do it for these three parts and not say your rear wing, your front wing and your suspension is actually quite, uh, quite easy, quite easy to explain. Your suspension is actually really good for focusing, say, brake, uh, brake cooling. And let's have a look at what we would achieve if we'd made a balanced suspension to start off with. It's 10, 7, 7, 4, 1.67. But if we focus brake cooling instead, we end up with a part that loses a little bit of stance, of course, but we gain a massive 16.6% in brake cooling for this part. And this year, when tire temperatures are actually very important, when the parts themselves are way more expensive to, well, manufacture for one, you kind of want to get brake cooling up pretty early to just save money. So 
Personally, I'd say this is a investment. Of course, you can focus on just pure pace stats, but I'd say it's worth it to put some <clears throat> put some money into break cooling already now. It's probably going to pay off in the long run to just do this basically at the first iteration of the suspension. Now, for your rear wing and your front wing, they two have this is two have stats that we want to focus on. For the rear wing here, they have a new stat called DRS Delta, which is basically the speed and acceleration under DRS. And because of the changes to tire tires and tire temperatures, there's going to be a lot more uh, a lot more opportunities for cars to run one or two seconds, you know, between each other. Meaning that everyone ain't, isn't going to be in a DRS train like uh, we saw in 22. There's going to be a lot of gaps, and having a good DRS. It's going to really help you get through those gaps and climb the field. So we're going to be focusing DRS Delta for the rear wing. And by doing so, we are going to be able to actually make a rear wing that still has some decent cornering. We're going to lose a little bit of dirty air tolerance, but that's fine. Again, dirty air tolerance is following in uh, following other cars. It will have an effect on your tire temps as well. But for now, this is OK, because as you can see, we get a massive boost to DRS effectiveness more than more than a 50% increase. And if we have a quick look here on what we can expect compared to other cars, this will actually give us the best DRS on the grid from the get-go. So that is why we want to focus on DRS for the rear wing. And for the front wing itself, what we do want to focus on here is uh, also very simply a, a particular stat. It is the airflow sensitivity stat. And the reason why we want to focus airflow sensitivity is actually quite simple. It has to do with dirty air tolerance. And again, we do need to have some dirty air tolerance in order to handle following other cars without cooking our tires. And if we really wanted to too, we could do something like this. That's the wrong one, sorry. We could do something like this and split the gain between the dirty air and also get a decent amount of brake cooling. And of course, we do want to do this design intense. We want to do it on everyone. So basically, we're getting some huge stack boost to go with. And then we can start focusing a little bit on some of the other stats as well. So I'm going to quickly now make a car with these stats and we'll see how it stacks up against the rest of the grid. Here we go. This is our underfloor that we're about to manufacture. It has full CFD, full wind tunnel, and as you can see, balance with everything to in the middle, except for lifespan. This is all the stats that we're going to get. For the front wing, we're going to do the split here for this one. Half uh, airflow, half brake cooling. Again, lifespan to minimum. And of course, we're going to use intense. Now, engineers here, we can actually, we're going to distribute, distribute afterwards. And we're also going to get a rear wing going. Again, we're just going to get the things that take the longest time. Honestly, though, rear wing, front wing is something you could probably make uh, last simply because, well, they have very short manufacturing times. So it'll depend on your personal preference, but I like to just get these pieces out of the way early. Now, what we could do also is uh, what we did with the front wing here. We could focus two different stats, say get a little bit of extra KPH, which would of course help us out there. We still have the best DRS on the grid, so we're going to do this split. It's going to hurt our dirty air tolerance uh, quite a bit here. We won't get as much uh, of a benefit from the front wing, but that too is perfectly okay. Get that done in tens. And the last one here, we're just going to do the other special projects of ours, which is... Uh, you know, cooling for the suspension, and like so. And again, for, for this one, we're just going to stick with brake cooling. We could focus, say, a little bit more into cornering because we are lacking that. Uh, we could do top speed, but again, we're getting a lot of that from the rear wing. So if we are going to do anything here, I'd say do something like this, because again, we are getting also an extra 9% from uh, the front wing that we're making. So we can do airflow front to try and, you know, help a little bit out here with the loss of low, low and medium speed cornering. And this is the suspension that we're going to make. A2 is going to be intense. And with that, we've actually already spent a decent um, chunk of money on upgrades here. So car part development is, uh, this says 32 million, but in reality, uh, what, we, what we have spent is uh, closer to 17. So we'll get these parts made and then we'll make the other two and we'll see where we stand. Side pod, balanced, let's get it cooking. All right, we now have all six parts on our car. And as you can see, we actually excel in a few stats here. And if you compare it to the grid, we have the best kind of acceleration and DRS effectiveness, as well as brake cooling. 
we are decent low speed, uh, lacking a little bit of medium and high speed, but generally here I'd say we are currently probably the fifth best car on the grid. Potentially sixth best, but at the same time we do have a fairly good car now, and we're basic we basically have our at Baku the fourth race of the season, so. It's a very good starting point. Now keep in mind that if you did this, you are, probably would have also a underfloor currently cooking because we have more CFD that we haven't actually used. So as you can see, we'll actually run out in four days. Uh, but you probably have another CFD in, uh, in the oven right now. And again, you probably want to just keep on doing your underfloor balance for as long as you can. It's probably the easiest way to progress. And as you see from car one performance, won't be a huge uh, boost there, but at the same time, it is a pretty sizable boost all around. So again, just keep the underfloor balance probably until you reach 70, maybe even 80% uh, in terms of expertise for the part. And for the parts that we did that we maximized, you're going to have to think about how you want to go forwards with them because they are maximized. They are going to have some limits now to how you can develop them. For instance, if we have a look here, uh, these are the parts that we, as I said, did maximize. And if we do this, we can actually do a bit of an upgrade again. It's going to be a very small upgrade, but it's going to upgrade all stats. What you can also do instead is you can focus on the stats that we didn't do the first time around. Do something like this. It's going to, of course, make a piece that isn't good for your dirty air tolerance, your brake cooling. But the idea here is very simple. By doing this, we are kind of balancing the piece back out again. We're not going to be using this one. We're going to be making another one after this. So depending on your approach, Doing uh, the two to the right could be very good. Or you could play it a bit more safer, do six balance parts before you start moving your sliders to the right or to the left. And I probably would recommend that. Like every at the start of the season, just make all of these, put the put the uh, put this all the way to the right so you get the most of a boost, keep everything balanced, do all six parts, keep the underfloor uh, as basically an investment ground for CFD, keep it balanced. And the other pieces here, after you've made that first balanced one, you can start doing as we did with the rear wing here, trying to maximize uh, a couple of stats rather than doing something else like this. But honestly, as you can see, even now, as long as you keep on doing as you what you did initially, you can still get some you can still get some okay boosts, but you're still going to st struggle to catch up that fourth car this season. You're going to need that little bit of extra boost starting next season. Also, in terms of research we can actually have a quick look at that. So we're having some minor technical changes. As you can see, we're losing 30% on the low speed, we're losing 20% on the medium speed, and 10% on the high speed. In terms of research, I wouldn't start researching until you have about 20 million left on your cost cap. And the reason for that is quite simple. Research isn't very effective at uh, casting out regulation changes, because no matter what you do, your research is gonna end up with positive numbers. So, and again, it's kind of annoying here because it doesn't tell you, it tells you the production in percentage, but it doesn't tell you the, uh, how much you're going to be losing of these stats. So what I would actually recommend instead of really doing research as again, do research once you're running a lot of money, but what you could do is wait until next season and put the sliders for whatever it gets hit with research to the right, uh, make a couple of parts like that. You could make a balance set to begin with, then do all sliders to the right to catch up and then focus a little bit on the other stats here. So it is, you have a few strategies in terms of that. I don't know what is best yet for research, but you have my development strategy here. It's fairly, it's fairly efficient. As you can see, we have basically four races in the fifth best car on the grid from ninth, and we can start scoring points reliably. And as I said, potentially start developing those other three parts into certain directions if we want to. We can also keep on developing front wings and rear wings. And as I said, if you are going to do that, you're either going to be continuing with what you were doing earlier, or you're going to make a part that you most likely won't use, but we'll be focusing on boosting those other stats a little bit before you make another one with the initial one. So in this case, we'd make, we'd make this one. We would not manufacture it. We'd make this with Intense. We would not manufacture it. And once we, once this one is done, we'd immediately make another one uh, back at... <clears throat> back at this setup which should be a bit more of an upgrade but yeah that is it for this guide feel free to ask any questions you might have i know that i have been a little bit all over the place but this is basically the first crude attempt at making a development guide for this game there is probably a better development strategy out there but uh until we find that one i'll be 
I'll be trying, I'll be testing and I'll be figuring it out. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I will be streaming in a little bit later today, so feel free to drop by and ask there. And I hope this guide has helped you. And again, if there's something that has been unclear, feel free to ask, but this is generally what I feel is the best development strategy. And again, research seems to be a little bit underwhelming for me personally right now. So I probably spend my last 20 million of the cost cap for it. And when I say the last 20 million of the cost cap, I do mean the last 20 million. So if you go into your finances here, cost cap, the projected, once this number hits about 20 million, I start doing research only. Research is cheaper, but at the same time, uh, at the end of the season, you might need more money for, you know, crashes, for potential broken engines, they're 5 million a pop. So keep in mind that that 20 million is not only your research money, it's also your, you know, emergency fund, so to speak. So with that, again, hope this guide has helped you. Hope to see you next time. And I'll probably be making more development guides in the future. Uh, if I do, I'll probably be taking this one down. But for now, as I said, this is probably one of the most efficient ways of developing your car this early on in the game until we find a better way. So again, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope I hope this has helped. And if it has, please like and subscribe as it helps me out a ton. Bye bye.